Sole sancta parens, en ixa puer perare gem, quintenum terram quid regit, in secula, In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God my that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. O God, who made the mother of your Son to be our mother and our Queen, graciously grant <clears throat> that sustained by her intercession we may attain in the heavenly kingdom the glory promised to your children through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The angel led me to the gate which faces, faces east, and there I saw the glory of the God of Israel coming from the east. I heard a sound like the roaring of many waters, and the earth shone with his glory. The vision was like that which I had seen when he came to destroy the city, and like that which I had seen by the river Chebar. I fell prone as the glory of the Lord entered the temple by the way of the gate which faces the east. But the Spirit lifted me, up, lifted me up and brought me to the inner court. And I saw that the temple was filled with the glory of the Lord. Then I heard someone speaking to me from the temple while the man stood beside me. The voice said to me, Son of man, this is where my throne shall be. This is where I will set the soles of my feet. Here I will dwell among the children of Israel forever. The word of the Lord. The glory of the Lord will dwell in our land. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. Lord of the Lord, Lord of the Lord. Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. Lord of the Lord, Lord of the Lord. 
The Lord himself will give his benefits, and our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him, and salvation along the way of his steps. The glory of the Lord will dwell in us. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. You have but one Father in heaven, you have but one Master, the Christ. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowds and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees have taken their seat on the chair of Moses. Therefore, do and observe all things whatsoever they tell you, but do not follow their example. For they preach, but they do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens hard to carry and lay them on people's shoulders. They will not lift a finger to move them. All their works are performed to be seen. They widen their phylacteries and lengthen their tassels. They love places of honor at banquets and seats of honor at synagogues, greetings in the marketplace, and the salutation, Rabbi. As for you, do not be called Rabbi. You have but one teacher, and you are all brothers. Call no one on earth your father. We have one father in heaven. Do not be called master, you have one master, the Christ. Grace among you must be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled. Whoever humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. We celebrate today the glorious feast day of the queenship of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God. And we know that after our Lord ascended into heaven, he took Our Lady into heaven. That's the feast day of the Assumption and the queenship of Mary. So it's eight days. It's the octave day, really, of the Assumption. And the idea is Mary is taken up into heaven bodily, and then she's crowned the coronation uh, and and really this would happen all at all at once because we're sort of stepping outside of the whole idea of time but these two ideas and events are stretched out over the octave days uh, these eight days so that it's for our benefit so that we can take the time to contemplate them they're the fourth and fifth glorious mysteries of the rosary we spend our lives contemplating them uh, and there's much here and I just have a, a a couple of thoughts about this, this queenship, which is so important, and we know um, a lot has been made of the whole idea of the Ark of the Covenant, and the, uh, I remember the raiders of the Lost Ark in Indiana Jones went looking for this thing, and why did he go looking for this? this there was this Ark in Israel, and it was a wonderful creation, this box made of acacia wood, a wood that uh, was incapable of, of um, rotting. And then it was lined with gold, and they actually they put a blue veil over it, all these wonderful details. Um, and then many people say, well, it was lost. We don't know where it was. Actually, the Scripture tells us exactly where it went. It's in the book, I believe it was 2 Maccabees. It may have been first. I think it was second. The prophet Jeremiah took it. He took the Ark of the Covenant because the, um, the looters were coming, and he didn't want it to be stolen, so he brought it to Mount Nebo, and he found a cave. And he hid it inside of this cave, and then he sealed it up so that no one would ever find it. And then he made a prophecy, and he said, the ark will return. The ark will return when God remembers his mercy. 
And when did the ark return? It returned when Christ came. That's when God remembered his mercy. And that's what Mary says in chapter 2 of the Gospel of Luke. For the Lord has remembered his promise of mercy. Mary is the true ark. And she bears inside of her the true word, the eternal word of Almighty God. In fact, there's this wonderful verse. It's so fitting our Lord would take her to heaven because if you look in it's Psalm 132. It's really about the ascension of the Lord. And it's this little verse, and you've probably heard it a hundred times, and it says, go up, Lord. But then there's this other detail. Go up, Lord, you and the ark of your strength. So the Lord takes the ark, the Blessed Virgin Mary, up into heaven. And he's going to take every one of us up. And that's the whole point of his mission. It's to lead us up into heaven so that we won't be going back to the old paradise of Eden, which we lost. We'll be going to the new paradise. So Mary is up there, and she's there as his queen. And Mary is different from our queens on earth. And just three little details. One, she, she is sinless. She is sinless, but also she... Um, she, she suffered. And when she was on earth, I think for non-Catholics or for, for Protestants, let's say, um, it's hard to think of, of Mary as anything other than just a normal person. But for us, because we know her greatness, it's kind of hard to think of her that she's also a, you know, a real human being, sinless, but a real human being. She suffered probably more than any other woman in all of history, her soul, her heart was pierced by a, a figurative sword when she saw her son hanging on the cross. And so that means that as our queen in heaven, she, she's such a good queen, she knows how to lead people who are suffering. She doesn't have any manipulation in her heart or any self-seeking. She's profoundly compassionate upon us. And also, um, on earth, you know, if we, have, if we had a queen, we don't, but if we did, the queen is who? It's the wife of the king. But in ancient Israel, from the time of Solomon on, the queen was the mother of the king. So Solomon saw his mother Bathsheba come in after David had died. And Solomon so sitting on his throne, and he said, we need another throne. And he had another throne put right next to his on his right. And Queen Bathsheba came in, and she sat there. And there was this man named Adonijah. And he had this problem because there was a woman that he really liked, and he wanted to marry her. But he needed people to arrange to make this happen. And he thought, well, if I talk to the king, he's not going to listen to me. So he went to Bathsheba, and he said, you talk to him. He's your son. He'll do anything that you ask him to do. He'll never say no to you. It's a very good instinct. Isn't this how we see Our Lady? We go to her because the king of the universe calls her mom. And he won't say no. She knows how to speak to him. She has the most gracious speech. She knows when is the right time. She knows if we're asking for something, but it's not quite the right thing, she can make a little adjustment along the way. So she really does intercede for us. And lastly, we recognize that Mary is the new Eve. Eve was supposed to be Adam's helpmate. Well, she was. She helped him right into a lot of trouble. But then... In John's Gospel at the wedding feast of Cana, which also occurred on the seventh day, Jesus is, and he calls Mary the same word that Eve was called, woman. And Mary helps him. She helps him to bring forth the first of his great wonders. They have no wine, so they have this miracle of wine. And one of the things I think is remarkable about that is just that um, the idea that the, this was the best wine, but they saved it for last. So often, Jesus and Mary do save the best for last. And so that should give us a lot of hope because we still have more and more good things coming from the hand of our Lord. And ultimately, the greatest thing at all, of all, which is that we too will be brought up into heaven with God. And so today, let us entrust ourselves and our families and all of our cares to our Immaculate Queen, the Blessed Virgin Mary.
With confidence, we place our prayers and petitions before God, our Heavenly Father. For Pope Francis and all the clergy, may our Blessed Mother watch over and guide them as they shepherd their flock. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all world leaders, may they imitate Mary's gentle approach and strive for peace in their lands and around the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, may we have the humility and docility of Mary to respond always with generosity to God's grace in our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, may they live forever with God, Mary, and all the saints in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear these prayers and to grant them if they are in accord with your holy will. For we make them with confidence through Christ our Lord. Salve Mater Misericordiae, Mater Dei et Mater Veniae, Mater Spei et Mater Gratiae, Mater Plena Sancte Letitiae, O Maria. Salve Decus Humani Generis, Salve Virgo Digno Digno Ceteris, Que virgines omnes transgrederis, et ancius sedes in superis, O Maria. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we observe this memorial of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we bring you our offerings, O Lord, praying to be given strength by the humanity of Christ who offered himself to you on the cross as the unblemished oblation, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name in veneration of the blessed ever-Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, 
Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaot, plenis und celi et terra gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis, benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure offering may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, He took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile your, us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world, all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. 
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. On your stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, Miserere nobis, Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, Miserere nobis, Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, Dona nobis pace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be clean. Gloriosa, dicta sunt de te, Maria, quia fecit tibi mania, qui potens est. Magnificat anima mea dominum, et exaltavit spiritus meus, in Deus salutari meu. Gloriosa, dicta sunt de te Maria, Quia fecit tibi mania, qui potens est. Quia fecit mihi mania, qui potens est. Et sanctum nomen eius, et misericordia eius a progenie in progenies, timentibus eum. Gloriosa, dicta sunt de te, Maria, quia fecit tibi, Mania, qui potens est. 
Et misericordiae eius a progeniei in progenies, dimentibus eiu, fecit potentiam in braci, bra, bracio su, dispersin superbos mente codisui. Gloriosa, dicta sunt de te Maria, qui a fecit tibi mania, qui potens est. Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritui Sancto, sicut erat in principio et nunc et semper, et in saecula saeculorum. Amen. Gloriosa, Dicta sunt de te, Maria, qui a fecit tibi mania, qui potens est. Let us pray. Having received this heavenly sacrament, we humbly pray, O Lord, 
that we who reverently celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Virgin Mary may merit to be partakers at your eternal banquet through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hail, Holy Queen, enthroned above, O Maria. Hail, Mother of mercy and of love, O Maria. Triumph, O cherubim, sing with us, ye seraphim. Heaven and earth resound the hymn, Salve, Salve, Salve Regina.